Amen. In the service this morning, in the first service, we looked at the subject titled Accessing the Treasures of the Word. So in this service, we shall be looking at the second part of that message, Accessing the Treasures of the Word of God. We read in the book of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 13, the Bible says, because in him, that is in Christ Jesus, are hid all the treasures, two, three rather, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Jesus Christ is the word, so in him, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hid. In Psalm 119 verse 18, he said, open down my eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. So the word of God is a depot of wonders, wondrous things. It's a depot of treasures. In Matthew 13 and in verse 52, the Bible said, Then said unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed in the kingdom of God, of heaven, is like unto a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. So the instructions of the word is a compendium of treasure. What is instruction from the Bible is treasure for life. Is treasure for life. Scripture is treasurable. Scripture is a minefield of treasure. But how do we access this treasure? In Isaiah 22 and in verse 11, we saw, 29, 11, we saw a parable where he talked about the vision of it all. It's like the book. The words of a book that is sealed. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. The book comes sealed. That is why what we access is called revelation because it's concealed. In Revelation chapter 5 and in verse 1, the Bible said, I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven or on earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. One of the elders said unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof. And he continues. You see, I wept because no man was available to open the book. When the book is not opened, weeping continues. When the book is closed, Mourning continues. Travail continues. People begin to continue to struggle. They continue to, 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 to be stressed out. Peter said, I've toiled all night. I, I caught nothing. But as I've received this word now, my toiling is over. I see somebody coming to the end of travail, coming to the end of toiling. And if you are the one, shout the Lord and say, Amen. If I am to see the treasures of the book, what do I need to possess? How do I access this book? Number one, we looked at it and I'm not going to go through because of time. Through spiritual hunger. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. We looked at that in the first service. Because of time, I might not go through all of it. So please, you can pick the message of it or even go on YouTube. You will find it there. 
to look through. True spiritual hunger. Number two is true uprightness of life. The fear of God. An upright life. Godly life. Life of a man who fears God. That is the one that can see what he needs to see out of the book. Number three. It's through the art of meditation. Thinking the word. Ruminating the word. Digesting the word. Regurgitating the word. Gives us access to the treasures. Number four. It's through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the author of the book. When we ask for the help of the Spirit to show us what is in the book, praying in the Holy Ghost, making inquiries and asking, He will help us. Number five, it's true the climate of joy and praise. Depression is the enemy of revelation. Depression blocks the pathways of inspiration. Through the climate of joy, through the climate of praise, we can access revelation. We looked at those five in the first service. We have five more To look at. Number six, which is where we are starting from in this service, is true. The quality of meekness and humility. Meekness. God has very little business with the proud. The Bible said God resisted, resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. God has very, very little to do with the proud. In Psalm 25 and in verse 9, he said, the meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he teach his way. The meek. Not the proud. Not the arrogant. Not the haughty. Arrogance is the foundation for ignorance. In the world of the spirit. When you agree to be arrogant. You have agreed to be ignorant. Spiritually. Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth. In his time. In Numbers chapter 12 verse 3. The Bible said now the man Moses was very meek. Above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. Meekness is teachability. In meekness, you agree to be teachable. Meekness is the admission of ignorance. I admit that I don't know. You are ready and willing to be taught by anybody. Especially who knows more than you. Meekness. That meek Moses was the one that God gave the privilege to write the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. God gave him light because he saw that he was meek. James chapter 1 and in verse 19, James chapter 1, verse 24 rather, 21. Okay, let's start from verse 19 to 21. 
Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Slow to speak. You know, meek people are swift to hear. And they are slow to talk. Arrogant people talk all the time. They talk all the time. They talk, they are loquacious. Just keep talking all the time. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to run. For the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. And then verse 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul. The word is received only with the quality of meekness. You may have read one verse of scripture a hundred times. But there is something new you can see out of it every day if you will approach it with meekness. If you will let God know, I, I am aware there is something here that I don't know yet. And you will be taught. Somebody say it loud, Amen. True. The quality of meekness and humility. Number four. True specific request at the place of prayer. When you are specifically asking God to show you his word at the place of prayer, you get insight. In Psalm 119 and in verse 18, he said, open my eyes. The psalmist is praying that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. You are coming before God and you are telling him, Father, open my eyes today. Let me see something out of your word that I have not seen before. Open my eyes today. Let me see something out of your word I haven't seen before. Specific request at the place of prayer. In Jeremiah chapter 33 and in verse 3, he said, call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things which you knew not, which thou knowest not. Which means you are there at the place of prayer with your Bible in your hand. Lord, there are things I don't know as I open this Bible. Show me things I have not known. Show me, open my eyes. How many of us know that you have gone, you may have gone through this Bible many times, but there are verses in this Bible that somebody will read and you say, I haven't seen that verse before. It has happened to me many times. I've gone through this Bible many times. If you write on this altar, somebody is leading prayer, somebody is, 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 is doing something or the other, and I see a verse. I may have seen it together, but once that verse stood alone, I hadn't seen it before. I was preaching in Makodi some time ago. And the host minister said to me, these things are in the Bible, I never saw it. He said, oh, and if God does not open your eyes, you can't see it. So he said, call unto me and I will answer you and show you things that are there that you did not know. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 all the way to verse 18, Paul the apostle began to pray for the saints in Ephesus. Wherefore I also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints I cease not to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him he's praying for them that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead and so on and so forth he's saying i am praying for you that god will open your eyes. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, he said, verse 7, ask 
and it shall be given. Lord, I'm asking you to open, open me up to your word. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. I pray for somebody here today. God will open your eyes to see what you haven't seen before. In Jesus' precious name. True specific request at the place of prayer. Number three, true the act of searching and studying. You search and you study. You arrive at light through the act of the act of studying. And searching in Second Timothy chapter two and in verse fifteen, it says, "Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." Study. The escape from shame is study. Study, so you are not ashamed. In John chapter 5 and in verse 39, John 5 and in verse 39, very explosive. He says, search the scriptures. For in them, literally it means in them, you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Search the scriptures. Search it. Somebody say a loud Amen. That was what the Christians in Berea did. In Acts chapter 17 verse 11. After Paul preached to them. The Bible said. Look at verse 10. And then 10 and 11. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea. Who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble. Than those in Thessalonica. In the. They received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. To find, you must search. Proverbs 25 and in verse 2. Proverbs 25 and in verse 2. It is the glory of, the, of, of God to conceal a thing but it is the honor of kings to search out the matter. The glory of God is to conceal a thing. But the honor of kings is to search out a matter. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Say a louder amen. amen. Look at your neighbor say I will search it out. Say I will search the matter out. Say it out. Say I will search it out. How many of you at any time you have Gone to search in your wardrobe or your cupboard something that was missing, and suddenly you find something else that got lost some time ago. You didn't know, and you found it. And the, and it happens most under the bed or under the, you just you just you just flash your torchlight, and then you were looking for a pen that dropped, but suddenly you realize that a comb was there, <laughs> and you realize that something else was there. Because in the process of searching, you find even what you were not looking for. That is how it is with scripture. You can embark on a search. I am tired of falling sick all the time. Lord, I need the secret of divine health and strength and audacity and ruggedity and cacracarity. <laughs> Ooh, I need the secret and then you start with scripture health, healing if you have a bible that has concordance you type health or you type healing or you type healed and then you are reading all of those and then you get messages that have been preached on divine healing look and leave, heritage of health all those kind of things while you are listening to this, you are also going through the scripture. And as the light is coming, you are getting light from light. Somebody say light from light. 
There are times where you get revelation that the pastor did not preach. Out of what he said, you heard something. Something that applied to you. Something he did not say that the Holy Ghost made you to hear. You get the tape, you get the CD, you get the book. Lord, I am tired of begging and borrowing. I am hard working. I do my covenant obligations. I give tithes and offerings and so on. I can still be begging and borrowing. What is the secret? And then you enter into the world and begin to search. See, every time you read a book, you get information. Every time you read the Bible and you read it well, you get revelation. See, information gives you education. Revelation gives you impartation. Bam. Did you hear what I said? Every time you read a book, you may get information. That secular normal book. That information has educated you. You knew something you never knew before. But every time you see something out of the world, you got revelation. That revelation gives you impartation. Impartation means empowerment. You are empowered to function in that light. You are empowered to see the result that that revelation said you will see. Even as I am speaking now, that power is happening right now. In Ezekiel chapter 2 and in verse 2, he said, And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me. As I speak right now, I see the Spirit of God entering into somebody. If you are that one, shout the Lord and say, Amen. See after me, information brings education. Revelation facilitates impartation. That's the difference. That is why nobody ever read a book and got healed because he read a literature book. But somebody read a, 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 a Christian book and got healed and got delivered because he encountered light and that light. Let me tell you a story. A woman was, I heard a story, I think it was a Bob Mumford or so whose book, I think it was titled Face Off with a Miracle. She was sitting on a wheelchair. I'm reading a book. I think the title was Face Off with a Miracle. I heard it from Papa Yedepo. And she was reading the book. She kept reading. She's on a wheelchair. She kept, kept reading the book. Fired material. Revelation was being fired into her spirit. Light was coming. Suddenly, she said, wow. You mean that this is true? Hey, this is incredible. Only for us, her to realize that while screaming, she already stood from the wheelchair. And she's holding the book in her hand. She didn't know when, she, she didn't realize when she stood up. Electricity was fired into her system. By the light of that word. Oh, Mahashatakala. That is what I mean by revelation gives you impartation. I prophesy today, impartation is happening for somebody. If you are that one, shout the Lord and say, Amen. Something is changing in somebody's life today. A revolution is happening to somebody today. Give the Lord a turn around shout of hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. And so, if you are in a hurry throughout life, you are in a hurry. You won't be able to get much out of God. Half a day, a whole day, two, three days, you can decide, I want to go through the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Somebody brought me his son who was hooked on Indian hemp. I placed him on three, on three days fasting. Placed him on the word. Got him filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with tongues. At the end of the day, the taste died. Because something happened to him. You can take casual leave from the office. Not just to travel for holiday. But to sit with the word. 
sitting with that word will produce for you what a thousand holidays may not produce. You can take casual leave. Not just for, to travel for shopping. But to travel in, in the world for lighting. And that light you will get from the world can make you buy the shop you went to go to shop in. That light you will get from the world can make you become the owner of the shop you went to shop in. Through the act of searching and studying. Number four is through the action of fasting and waiting on the Lord. There are times you wait for, on God for light. You wait on God for insight. So this is a combination. You can combine three things. You are combining the searching with the prayer and join, and join with, with the fasting. For example, for the next three days, I want to pray and I want to fast and I want to search. For the secrets of the supernatural in ministry. That is, I am a pastor. I want to search the scripture. I want to search the word. I want to fast. I want to pray. I don't want to stand permanently and be apologizing on behalf of God. The reason why this and that cannot happen. You can do that. Those servant Bishop David Edepo said, he had talked about supernatural supply. That is God meeting the needs of his people according to his riches in glory. But it was not a reality in his life. Because what you preach is different from the result you have. And the worst thing that can happen to anybody is to preach something you have no result in. That's the worst thing that can happen to anybody. You, you preach something you have no result in. You have no victory over, over the enemy and you are preaching victory over the enemy. So he said the more he preached, the more re reproachful he was. So he went on a three-day fast. Lord, what is the secret of kingdom prosperity, spiritual supplies? What is the secret? He got the book of Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and read them with fasting for three days. At the end of three days, he got a light that exploded his mind. He said, I can't be poor. From that day, the year of 1983, this is 41 years now, he has seen, and he's seen supplies at the frequency of ease. They call it excess without stress. Without any form of stress. Without stress. Whatever needs to be done, there is enough resources to do it. Economy notwithstanding. Because my God shall supply all your needs. Not according to the economy of the nation. But according to the, his riches and glory. This thing was built... This place here was built during one of the worst recessions in this country. Dollar rate multiplied many times. It continued non-stop. Am I communicating at all? And, and God is no respecter of persons. You may be a pastor or a preacher. If you don't practice what you ask others to practice, they will practice it and get results. You will be without result. Except you turn yourself into a beggar. Somebody say loud, amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 6. Isaiah 58 verse 6. He said, it's not this the fast that I have chosen. To lose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free. Then you break every yoke. Verse 8. 
When you do the fast, then shall your light break forth as the morning. And your health shall spring forth. There are two things that a fasting will, should do. Number one is the supply of light. Number two is the release of health. A fast, a real fast. Your light shall break forth. You, you break forth in light. In the climate of the fast. When you need, when the prayer is not, has not solved it, when, when the other things haven't done, you add the fast to say, Lord, show me this and show me that. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, verse 1 to 2, God spoke when the people were fasting. In verse 2, they ministered to the Lord, they fasted, the Holy Ghost said. The Holy Ghost can sp speak to you in your heart and he can in your ears and can speak to you from the word. All we need is this, the voice of God and the fast can do that. Now, in the first service, I asked people, I said, who do you think was the most prolific or the most lighted person in the New Testament, apart from Jesus Christ, had more insight, more revelation, more word, obviously and undoubtedly is Paul the Apostle. Undoubtedly. Is Paul the Apostle. Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Titus, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Jude, the whole book of Hebrews. This man wrote all of it, all. And, and they left the other, the other half of the New Testament for the other apostles. What was his secret? In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, we saw one secret right there in that verse. He said, I thank my God, I speak with tongues more than you all. I fellowship with the Holy Spirit more than all of you. No wonder he wrote more than them. Now, another secret in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. This man, who was a man of light, was also a man of fasting, in weariness. Painfulness in watchings often, in hunger, in, fast, in fastings often. This were his credentials in cold and nakedness where, where such confrontations met him. In fastings often. Paul the Apostle fasted often. And because of that kind of walk, he was able to walk in light. Finally, number Five, which is also number 10 overall is true the walk of love through the walk of love and this is love for God and love for man the walk of love the walk of love first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 to verse 10 he said, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. I have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered into the heart of man. The things which God has revealed, prepared for them that love him, but God has revealed them to us by his spirit. Lovers of God are privileged custodians of insight from God. Lovers of God. There is a connection between love and light. To be in his love is to be in his light. Because God is love and he is also light. Somebody say amen. I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the light of the world. And 1 John chapter 4 verse 8, God is love. So to walk in love is to walk in light. Somebody say loud amen. Walking in love is walking in light. 
Let me say this as I round off. Love for God is incomplete until there is love for man. Say that again. Love for God is incomplete until there is love for man. You cannot claim to love God and hate man. First John chapter 4 verse 20 to 21. If a man say I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he claim to love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have we from him, that he, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody say a loud amen. Somebody shout the Lord most amen. amen. I heard the story of the man whose wife, very, very dedicated in church, committed. But when the man says, Madam, do this or that, say, Satan pack your load and go. Satan pack. Husband is Satan. Husband is Satan. I think she was in the choir at that time. Not here. <laughs> not here, not here. Not this place. It was a story I heard. Sing with the voice of a mocking bird. But husband is Satan at home. Even if he's Satan, is that how to address him? Will you address Satan like that and he will change? If you, you claim to love God and you don't see any love I have for God, this is this, this, this madam here. She's the one to confirm it. This girl here, this girl here. She's the one to confirm it. This baby, this child, and her siblings, they are the ones to confirm it. The people who drive the drivers, the people who are, they are the people to confirm it. Whatever you are confirming by yourself is not confirmed. Your wife, your children, the people in the close proximity of your life, the love you have for God will flow on them. There are times I'm out of prayer and I'm hugging everybody and hugging everybody and everybody. And my wife said, please, just go back there and remain there a bit more so that you can maintain and come out with the maintenance of this climate. Love for God is trigger for light. And love for God is confirmed by love for man. Somebody say amen. amen. And can I tell you something? There can be no love without joy. Lovers are joyful. They are excited people. When you see a man in whose heart love flows... Joy is also natural. Bitter people are depressed, two of us. Very depressed. They are bitter with everybody and they, they don't find any reason to laugh with. Even if they, they are laughing and they see somebody they are bitter against, the laughter is summarized. Galatians chapter 5 and in verse 23, you move from love. Start from verse 19, let's say. The fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. Move to the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. 22. But the fruit of the spirit is what? From the flow of love. What is next? And with joy comes what? Stand up on your feet. Show me a man whose heart is loaded with love. You won't look far to find joy. And then with joy, you will find the peace everywhere that passes understanding. And of course, 
Joy is one of the things we saw in the first service that will also trigger light. Am I communicating? So love will make you see light. Love will make you walk in joy. And joy will also make you see light. Because to be excited is to be lighted. We say that in the first service. Beloved, when the devil wants to deprive you of access to light, access to revelation, he will cut you off from joy. He will put your joy under pressure. He will send the devil and his demonets to irritate, aggravate, frustrate you. But you must send that devil back to hell. And you tell the devil, I cannot hand over my destiny to you. Go ahead and you alone maintain your bitterness. But I shall be excited. And then, from joy, from love, you flow to joy. And from joy, you flow to light. I'm going to give you five minutes and we are going to celebrate God. You are going to tell the devil you can't tie me down. You can't hold me down. And I want you to forgive anyone you need to forgive. Clean your heart of every trace of bitterness. Clean your heart of every trace. Every trace. Every trace of depression. And move into joy. There was a conclusion we drew. And it remains the same. Can you read that conclusion for us? It is wisdom to apply one's life to that which is profitable. Depression is not profitable. Bitterness is not profitable. Prayerlessness is not profitable. Unrighteousness is never profitable. It is wisdom to apply your life. You know, the seed of destiny today already addressed this last point. Malice practitioners. Like the way you have medical practitioners. Legal practitioner. Whatever else. Accounting practitioner. This one is a malice. He derives joy from malice. You know there are people who will keep malice with people until they are dead. The person has died. They are still bitter. You know I heard the story of somebody. The, he was crying bitterly that somebody died. So they thought it was out of love. Very bitterly. He said, what is happening? He said, the man has died with my money. <laughs> he still owed me to the bed. To the bed. The person telling the truth, say, okay, go and wake him up. Wake him up and collect your money. That is how life is. Don't walk in that realm. Free up your life. When people come to engage you in it, reject it. Don't be. Reject the in, 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 temptation to be invited into contention. Is somebody doing that today? Are you going to celebrate for the next five minutes? Are you going to celebrate for the next five minutes? Walk to seven people and tell them, I want to rejoice in the Lord my God. I want to rejoice in the Lord my God. I want to rejoice in the Lord my God. You are going to celebrate. You are going to celebrate. Now, remain standing and listen to this word. In the first service, I received, the, I mean, I, I came with a word actually for service. And that was Psalm 104 in verse 30. Psalm 104 and in verse 30. The Bible said, Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created. And thou renewest the face of the earth. I told them, I said, leave the scripture there. Maybe you can put it on, the, on one side of the screen. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. And they are created. So God is still renewing the face of the earth through creation. That creation did not happen once and for all at the beginning. He still creates when there is a need for creation. I follow what I'm saying here today. He still creates. He hasn't lost his creation, his creation ability. 
He has not lost his creativity. He sends his spirit. You dig a pond in the wilderness or desert somewhere. Just dig a pond. And all of a sudden, you come after a few days or so, you see life inside the pond where you put, you, you, you didn't put any life inside it. It, it, it. Life came on the spot. One day I saw a little documentary. I think it was Kalahari Desert. After about years of drought, the rain fell a little. Like they say in Nigeria, oh boy. Vegetation started shooting out on the spot. Toads and all manner of things started just rushing from wherever they had been. Look at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. Wine was created. Look at the lake of Gennesaret. After all night, no fishes. To me, either Jesus created the fishes or accelerated the growth process of the tadpoles or, and the fingerlings overnight, just on the spot. The little ones that couldn't be caught by the net. It was all still creation. Until the net break. God can still create if the kidney is damaged, the liver is damaged, he sends his wall, the pancreas, and they are created. A new prostate, new fallopian tubes, new ovaries, and they are created. This is your word. Under the next seven days, God will do a new thing. In somebody's life, in somebody's life, a work of creation. A work of a new beginning. You will do something new. Somebody say hallelujah. Pastor, where is baby praise? Did you come with praise? Where is she? Remain standing people. Something new. I said in the first service. The position that Joseph occupied did not exist. Before Joseph, Egypt had no prime minister position. I don't know if they had after Joseph, but it was created. How are you? How has she been since that day? She's been the one cooking the food. Eating more than you know. You know, she has to recover her weight. She has to recover her weight. She was a, she is a university student, afflicted by the enemy, became mute, and became everything. Began to lose weight, no eating, nothing. The healing and deliverance service, God delivered her. They went, and then there seemed to be a relapse. Where on and off, on and off, just complete mutism, no talk to nobody, no, no response, nothing. Till this few days ago, day before he said they came to my to the office, and that devil was arrested, checked back to her. And then she began to talk. It's as if somebody that was brought from a realm who is wondering what, what happened. She began to speak and celebrate. And I told her that they should be in church for the next two, three, or four weeks, I can't remember, so that that devil will return back to hell forever. Praise, congratulations. Are you happy? I'm happy, sir. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. The Lord will perfect his purpose in your life. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Under the next seven days, is there somebody trusting God at least for one thing new? Something new, a new beginning. I already see God touching the kidney of somebody on the right. Whether you are here live or you are watching. I see God touching somebody's prostate. Somebody's fallopian tubes and ovaries. And the uh, Mahasha. Female reproductive system. The pancreas. Anything in your body, in your life that needs to be created. Jehovah shall create it. In the course of this dance and this celebration. Something will happen. Five minutes of joy. Of excitement of celebration 
that could break you into light. Can you help me walk to seven people? Tell them I want to celebrate. I want to praise God. Let's go. Creator of the universe, what can you do? Celebrate, people. What can you do? 